Hi, would you like to introduce yourself for us? Yeah, I'm Jay Chatterjee, I'm a former Dean of College of Design, Architecture, Art and Planning. I was Dean here since, from 1981 to 2001. Okay. Nice. So, um, what are you passionate about? Architecture. Architecture, yep. <laughs> um, so, do you know why you wanted to teach or serve at the university? It, it was really much more of a coincidence. I had uh, graduated from Harvard and uh, one of my classmates were here and they wanted to hire me and this was 1967. So, thought I'll join University of Cincinnati. Okay, nice. So, um, <clears throat> what did you uh, what did you hope that like students took away from your classes? Well, most importantly, uh, take away the same type of passion about architecture that I felt all my life. Okay. Um, you said you were. Uh, you said you were dean, right? I was first joined as an assistant professor mm -hmm. in 1967. Okay. I was appointed dean in 1981. Okay. And then I I still taught till 2010 when I retired. Okay. So you said you came here as an assistant professor in 1967. Seven. 67. Okay. So what was uh, like the hiring process when you came here? It was uh, pretty unusually simple compared to now. It's very complex now. You have to follow all kinds of uh, rules, which is good. But at that time, it was almost as sim simple as, as I told you. Mm -hmm. uh, my uh, colleague from Harvard knew me, and they knew what they were looking for. And uh, I seemed to fit the bill. Basically, they brought me here and spent some time with my would-be colleagues, etc. And uh, then went back to Boston and uh, decided I'll come here. Okay. So now, of course, it's having been in for twenty years. I know <laughs> now it's way more complicated. Yeah. <laughs> you can't just do that. Yeah. So you have like a perspective, like both sides, like back then and like now. Okay. So, um, what were your relationship like among your colleagues? Very different from what it is now. There were a lot more comings and goings in each family homes or uh, getting together off time from classes, etc. Uh, usually there would be some gathering at one of my colleagues' places, etc. That's not quite so now, as far as I can gather. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, next question is: Since you said you were, uh, you're dean, and you were like in a position of like authority, um, how did you feel about like, uh, and interact with like the administration, like before when you were just like an assistant professor, and then after when you were like a dean. Oh my goodness, that's a very, very different with different presidents. Mm -hmm. um, when I was either assistant professor or associate professor, this was the second person who was president appointed, Warren Bennis. Mm -hmm. And uh, I still was a fairly junior faculty member, but somehow. Uh, he saw something in me, and he always had an inner circle, and I was very fortunate to be able to join that. So, he, and all my life almost he served as a mentor, so it, it was very different. So was the next president, Henry Winkler. The third president was Joe Steger, who I, not third, that's the fourth president. and. Um, 
with whom I worked as a dean for 20 years, bringing major architects to UC campus, which was, I feel, one of my major accomplishments here to change the campus, mm -hmm. complete redesign of the campus and buildings. Yeah, definitely. So um, I know that you previously said um, that the you brought like you were very influential to the change of campus, and uh, could you like talk about like the process of that and like what you had like in mind, like kind of your vision for it? Sure. What typically would happen in those days, deans had a lot of power to make the decision. I approached the deans mm. uh, with presidents. Uh, permission and suggestions. And then I would, um, uh, usually there would be a search committee. I chaired most of the search committees and uh, they will, well, I would make a presentation to the committee about let's say 30 or so architects work. Then we'll boil it down to three or four or five and then I'll try to get the major decision makers to go with me to their work sites to see their work mm -hmm. in their office and um, come back then maybe even narrow it down to three or so and bring them to the campus. They will give a lecture also during that time. and. Um, from that, we would make a selection. Uh, usually, I also worked out with the state uh, because at that time, the state did not allow outside architects to work. I wanted to bring major thinkers of architecture to here. So I was able to work out a system in which uh, local architects and national architects will cooperate as a as a group, as a partners. Local architect would be architect of record. In architecture, there are like three stages. Mm -hmm. One is called preliminary design, another is called design development, and another is called construction drawings. Mm -hmm. Construction drawing is almost 60, 65% of the work. The way we had set up the national architect would be responsible for preliminary design and design development, and local architect would be responsible for construction drawings. This is separate from anything I had to accomplish that before this whole process would get started, including this was the first building, Eisenman's building in DAP was mm -hmm. the first one. And uh, basically that, that was the process really. Uh, the, uh, the state architect will give half a dozen names I will provide another half a dozen name and then we'll make up a group from that. Okay. All right. So, um, yeah, I want to like delve deeper into like the whole process of like the transformation of campus because I find that like really fascinating. Mm -hmm. um, could you like maybe talk about like uh, like each of the different like buildings and designs and stuff that you you did for a campus when you like transformed it and were like the plan. Well, there's almost a dozen buildings. There is okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, main thing about this building was to provide a new. It's very uh, a long story, I yeah. and mean, it would take much more than an hour. This yeah. is looking like almost my life's work, so yeah. <laughs> it will take much more time. But then the main uh, idea in here was to develop an addition which it doesn't mimic the old building because all the construction method and materials etc have changed mm -hmm. but yet evokes some memories and the architects makes many moves such as bringing part of the old buildings to the new and new buildings to the old and uh, it's more complex than that, but the, the, one of the major features of this building, how it was accommodated to the old building. Mm -hmm. um, 
The next one was Michael Graves Building, uh, who was one of our graduates, which is the Engineering Research Center, ERC, mm, okay. uh, Engineering College, which is, Michael was a, a great architect who developed a movement. Uh, he was part of a movement and certainly he was one of the leaders of postmodern movement in architecture. So his moves were like bringing classical forms to present context and that's what that building reflects. Mm -hmm. It also sits on the symbolically at the apex point of University Avenue coming down and then change levels because our campus is very hilly yeah. and it provided the transition about two levels up from there. Okay. Uh, and I can go on, but yeah. the, the, these are generally mm -hmm. what was thought. Okay, yeah, mm -hmm. that's fascinating. And we also simultaneously hired an urban designer, landscape architect, mm -hmm. who did the plans for the whole university. Okay. So this was going on simultaneously. I also chaired the committee which who brought this guy, mm, okay. George Hargreaves here. George Hargreaves, okay. So while like you were uh, while they were doing like the buildings and stuff, you had somebody else at the same time doing like the the design of the campus like itself. Uh, overall design of overall the campus design. and okay. and we were able to then specify mm -hmm. what type of building is going where. Mm -hmm. and what we are trying to accomplish with that. Mm -hmm. Just like taking that as an example, Michael yeah. Graves' building had to provide the focal point of the University Avenue yeah. ending there. So we had ideas like that which were specified before. Mm -hmm. Generally speaking, we specified the height yeah. and the bulk without designing it. Designing fell on the architect. Oh, okay. So you already had like a pre, like, uh, like vision of like... Yes. Okay. Before and then after that, you went in there and like designed mm -hmm. it. Okay, that's cool. Interesting. So, um... If, if anything of this is of interest, I yeah. think when I was preparing for the new building as a dean and hiring Peter Eisenman at that time, mm -hmm. um, the college also had to reflect. Just before that, I had completely reorganized the college into what's known as DAAP now. Not it really. was not like that. Okay. Uh, we had like 11 or 12 departments. Mm. I grouped them around design, architecture, art, and planning. And in planning, there were two or three other departments outside. They were transferred to DAAP. Mm -hmm. it went the, the letter P was added. So it needed a whole reorganization of the college mm -hmm. to move better able to respond to the next century. And uh, another very interesting work I did. Those two certainly very important mm -hmm. work in my life. Yeah. And that, uh, the other one, when I first arrived in 67, at that time, 1966, it was the famous urban riot. Mm. Cincinnati was deeply affected by it and the community and the city hall did not get along, did not talk to each other. So at that time West End and Queensgate too was being developed and they came to university to see if university would do the plan and I was asked to join in as a co-director of the project. So I worked on the Queensgate to development plan that was in 1968. So just like a year after you came here. Mm -hmm. Wow. So you'd say like your three proudest achievements would be like the design of the campus, the uh, organization of uh, the college, of the college, and reorganization. reorganization, yeah, and then the Queens. Queensgate to development and, and just in general participation in cities. Mm -hmm. I was a long term member, long time member of what's called Urban Design Review Board, mm -hmm. which reviewed every building that went into the center city. Mm -hmm. uh, Historic Preservation Board, mm 
Okay. So I worked with city for a long time, but that was a very specific project. Mm -hmm. The it was very difficult project because uh, practically uh, myself and one of my colleagues going into meeting with the neighborhood in the churches, etc. Then coming back and meeting with the city planners, etc. In the city hall, city manager and others, mm -hmm. and trying to bring them together to agree to a plan, which yeah. eventually we did. And it was very volatile, so that was the most difficult aspects of the work. Yeah, just getting people to just come together and agree. Mm -hmm. So, so you said you were like very involved in the city. Is there a way that um, you see like uh, how the university has influenced the city of Cincinnati? Yes, I mean, I also did very similar approaches to, for example, downtown. Mm -hmm. I bought Zaha Hadid. I was involved in uh, bringing Zaha Hadid to Cincinnati to the Contemporary Art Center. I brought uh, Cesar Pelli mm -hmm. uh, to do the work in Aronoff Center downtown. Uh, many other, uh, there's hardly any major buildings mm -hmm. over the last 30 years or so where I didn't have some say or other okay. to the Urban Design Review Board. Wow, that's crazy. That's really cool. Um, yeah, I really, I really like what I like. I think this is all like really fascinating to me. <laughs> um, like, I think I've talked to other people's or in other interviews before. Mm -hmm. And then I think I like how like the university now like you can't there's like no cars that can really drive on it, like before was it like was there roads that you could like drive on and then we had to change that in the redesign that of that. That was one of the plans. That's one uh, of the plans. Okay. That <laughs> streets crisscrossed all over the place and it looked like a you wouldn't believe it. It it really mm -hmm. looked like a little commuter college. Really, okay. Or branch college or something like that where. People mainly came by bus, mm -hmm. students, mm -hmm. and they just left. And it was completely empty after 6 o'clock. Wow. It was a very different kind of environment. Mm -hmm. We tried to create an environment where students would stay mm -hmm. and have food places, entertainment places, etc. So that played a big role in the redesign as well as redesign of the uh, na uh, neighborhood in the uptown neighborhood over there, so that the food and other things are all developing there, yeah. and as well as the students and developing. So we stopped all the highways going through the uh, uh, campus, created garages at the edges, and they had to park and then walk. Walk in. Okay. It was a very deliberate plan to do that. Wow! Yeah, that is that's crazy. Now that I think about it, I can see like. They were all yeah. shut down, yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, like the campus is, is beautiful. Like I remember when I first came here, like yeah. I thought the design. Now it is beautiful, but yeah. uh, if you are able to see old pictures, you will mm -hmm. see, or if you, anybody who graduated in the 70s mm -hmm. or 60s, yeah, you'll find out uh, they didn't think of it very highly. Actually, really? they hated it. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's like the opposite, I think. That's yeah, because I've like looked at old pictures and I've tried to see like where everything was like in relation to it is now. Mm -hmm. It's crazy, like the amount of change and the transformation that campus has gone through. That's crazy. So, um, I guess the next question would be, um, how since uh, throughout your years uh, working here at UC? How have you seen like students change? Like in oh, the students come by generations. It's mm -hmm. very, very different in different times. Sixties um, and seventies students were very social conscious, very dedicated, and they all wanted to be involved with planning and development and. With the city, etc. Mm -hmm. Then I would say these are somewhat over generalizations, but in, that's the only way I can respond to these things. 80s were very different, 80s were almost like 
me generations what can you do for me mm -hmm. and it was very centered on making money and uh, a very different approach it, it is an approach but it's very different from the 60s and 70s group um, 90s again uh, the country was very very uh, steady wealthy um, more satisfaction came from that. Huge urban development was taking place everywhere. A lot of suburban development was taking place. Um, so they were also quite dedicated in a different way. Mm -hmm. um, a little difficult for me to talk about after 2010 because uh, I really teach it. This summer I did teach a course. Oh, okay. Uh, but uh, uh, not regularly anymore mm -hmm. after I retired. So mm -hmm. I don't have that direct contact. So, But my answer to your question would be it sort of seemed like it almost varied by generations. Mm -hmm. So, like, each generation was it different? It different. Okay. I, I think it is also involved with what's happening with the world, what's happening with the uh, situation. If anything, today's generation is very conscious about ecology, about mm -hmm. uh, environmental aspects of the world. Yeah. So, um, I know that in previous interviews I've had, um, I think I interviewed Oscar Fernandez before, mm -hmm. and um, he was he was like a more recent uh, retired or mm -hmm. he retired more recently here. Mm -hmm. He talked about like in uh, talking about like the diversity of the students. Mm -hmm. I think he said that it was like very culturally rich and diverse here when he was teaching. Mm -hmm. I was wondering if if it like if the diversity of students have changed throughout like the years and has gotten more like diverse. As oh a, my goodness! Yes. Really. Okay. When I first came, <laughs> I remember when the first woman appeared in architecture class, first woman ever. Mm -hmm. No question of even American blacks at that time. Yeah. Uh, that was a curiosity. I mean, the fact you used to, didn't know quite how to deal with one woman in the class. But uh, I, I've seen from basically what it is to be Midwestern, solid, uh, some farm families and uh, others, but mostly white mm -hmm. Americans too. Not mostly, all. All, oh, okay. Yeah. And then there was a little bit at a time, more foreign students were coming in, more African Americans coming in, more women are joining. I've seen from there to now architecture has more women than guys. So, really? Yeah, at least one year it was, yeah. One year it was? Okay. Yeah. Wow. That was, <laughs> that was like recently? Yeah. Okay. Wow, that's interesting. I never thought that. That's really cool. So, um, I guess next, um, how has the faculty changed like over time throughout the years? <clears throat> It, it changes, but it also changes by program. Different mm -hmm. programs have different kind of demands and issues. But again, it moves, seems to be like decades or something. Once a faculty member there, and if they have a tenure, they usually tend to have a career like mine. Mm -hmm. um, that hasn't changed very much. Uh, if people come here and then they de decide to stay here, they usually finish up their career there, which is very rare in today's world. Mm -hmm. Because outside world is constantly moving. I see through my children, etc. They change job at the drop of a hat. Yeah. But this is, the academic world is somewhat more stable. Mm -hmm. uh, Sometimes some people criticize too stable. It is yeah. it to be more flexible um, in terms of hire. Mm -hmm. So it, yeah, it also changes, and um, just like the students I talked about, yeah. the emphasis changes. Today, hardly anyone comes in um, that are not interested in ecology area. Mm -hmm. Um, 
during when I first joined, maybe even a bachelor's of architecture was enough to teach. Mm -hmm. No longer you have to have a master's, and now you have to have a PhD to teach. Yeah. So that's another level of change that has taken place as we are moving through. Okay. A lot of changes have taken place during the time I, w I was here. I bet 50s backwards uh -huh. were far more stable. And uh, there was this image of American society that are depicted in movies. Movies are very interesting when they depict particular type of culture and society and life pattern, etc. But 50s, up to 50s, well, war was very disruptive. Mm -hmm. And then 50s, the Americans, seems to me, sought desperately quietness, stability, family, etc. And then in 60s, everything changed. Wow. Everything changed in 60s with Vietnam War. Mm -hmm. It just changed like, yeah, it just changed like everybody's mindset from the war. Well, uh, all sort of turmoil, the folk song came into its being. People like Joan Baez and others were singing right at Harvard Square at that time. Mm -hmm. As a student, I could go see them in a small little cafes. And uh, Bob Dylan was singing. And they were having tremendous influence to their music, etc. really interesting. Yeah, you said that you've seen like throughout your years out here, you've seen a lot of changes. I think that's like what we're really like looking forward or looking for in this project is to just like get the your guys' perspective on the changes you witnessed throughout UC's history and try to just like record that so we have some like better history of UC. So I think it's what this project is like really yeah. amazing about. changes have taken place in mm -hmm. the last half of last century. Okay, yeah. From 1950 to 2000, incredible changes has taken place. Uh -huh. Would you like to maybe like say uh, a little bit of those changes in the time that we have or talk a little bit more about those? Sure. Um, <clears throat> as I said, after World War II mm -hmm. with the returning veterans, etc., when it was possible for them to get uh, uh, veterans grants. Mm -hmm. uh, FDR had made uh, getting mortgage, Federal Mortgage Association first provided mortgage, which now very common, but it was started at that time. Yeah. So people started, and then Eisenhower era, the whole highway system was introduced. Mm -hmm. The automobile industry was in ascendancy. Millions of cars started being produced. Detroit in those days dominated the society. Mm -hmm. And people started moving outside, creating suburbs and living there, etc. Then America got involved with Vietnam War, which had an absolute cataclysmic uh, impact. Majority of the youth absolutely did not like it, felt it was not necessary, there's no point. Uh, nothing to do with the U.S., what's going on there, so why get mm -hmm. involved in the na nationwide? And whenever army is committed, of course, there's be this big jarring take place. One side says, oh, independence, liberty, and all of those kind of things, and others challenge the values, etc. So the value conflict is very high. Mm -hmm. uh, so that was one great change. Then, of course, when Reagan era was ushered in the 80s, uh, uh, it, uh, individual efforts became very important to people. So certainly Wall Street ruling, mm -hmm. uh, again through movies, yeah. uh, would be very interesting to see that. I mean, uh, greed was good mm -hmm. uh, with the value system that was prevailing and individual swarth and how individual 
approaches society it's very important and this aggregation of this individual uh, uh, makes the society uh, that uh, train always was very strong in American system and that prevailed um, then of course uh, during uh, early to 2000s, uh, the involvement with Iraq and Afghanistan and its continuous ongoing things and it's been proven very disruptive to the society and uh, probably found the seeds of very highly divisive society which I've never seen before. Mm -hmm. So, um, I guess, uh, going back to UC, um, how have, or have you seen UC's priorities shift throughout, like, the years that you've been here? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, each president... And I've worked with almost like 10 or 11 presidents mm -hmm. uh, at a different agenda. Mm -hmm. um, Warren Bennis uh, was, certainly was very visionary man. Mm -hmm. And to him, the leadership, how you develop leaders for future was the main kind of emphasis and worked from that. Mm -hmm. Uh, then two presidents later, uh, Joe Steger, certainly his biggest le legacy was what I worked on, mm -hmm. that is to change the campus because uh, I remember he had conducted an alumni and students survey and number one item came up on that survey as students and alumni did not like is the physical structure of the campus. So he felt he needed to do that. Certainly those two decades were very uh, much emphasized the growth and development of the physical structure. Um, and then our next uh, president who was a woman president mm -hmm. Uh, certainly a lot more emphasis was given the differences between uh, the employment situation at UC. More women were brought in, in um, leadership capacity, etc. So that was another kind of change mm -hmm. that, that's gone through. Um, 60s also in Venice's time mm -hmm. uh, also made a large attempt to do and engage African Americans. Two colleges which are non-existent now was created by Venice. One was called University College mm -hmm. uh, and one was called College of Community Services. They're all oriented towards that to bring in um, more of the community-oriented students and structure that they felt UC should reflect what's outside in the community. Mm -hmm. So that was also a big change. So those are the main massive changes that are taking place really. Okay. Okay. So, um, So you said the uh, the two colleges that Warren Bennis uh, created, you said, they're like non-existent now? Mm -hmm. Okay. That was like his attempt to like reach out to the community and mm -hmm. or around Cincinnati and like connect UC to the community. It outside. was basically felt afterwards that they have achieved their goals and they're not serving any more mm -hmm. real purposes of it because uh, University College was felt people um, uh, 
anyway, it didn't gain respect. Uh, they felt, students felt different from the rest of the campus. Uh, and um, it was gradually realized that's not the way to do it. Uh, that students would directly come to DAP or usually used to be on those two colleges and you take the transfers from there. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so there are a lot of reasons that residents and provost of those time felt. Uh, and same thing about community services. Uh, so they were abolished in, I would say about 80s, early 80s, late 70s. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, uh, I know that you, you worked on like the main campus part and then there's also the med campus. Did you have like, uh, any, did you have like any influence on the med oh, campus? Oh yeah, part? The, okay. one of the major building there is, uh, Frank Gehry's building of molecular biology building mm -hmm. that very, uh, uh, Carvilinear building, mm -hmm. yeah, big that's building. Uh, that certainly is one of He became worse. Most of the people we brought in was not that well known, and now they're all very, very well known worldwide. So we we selected very well. And Frank Gary did the Bilbao in Spain, and it, uh, it made a huge impact, and he is probably arguably the the best known architect in the world. Um, he got a Pritzker Prize, as did Zaha Hadid, just after CAC got Pritzker Prize. Tom Main, who did the rec center, mm -hmm. got Pritzker Prize. Pritzker Prize is almost like Nobel Prize in architecture. Okay, so it's so, the equivalent, like, version? Mm -hmm. Okay, interesting. So you, like, turned, were they just, uh, so they weren't really very well known before when you selected them, and then, they became like famous. Different. They were not totally unknown, okay. but they're not. They're not like as they are right now. They're like worldwide mm -hmm. influencers. Okay, yeah, it's crazy. They've like gone around the world, and mm -hmm. like you said, in Spain, I think was. Yes, Bilbao, Spain. Mm -hmm. He did a um, museum with Guggenheim in Europe, and. Um, it, it was, Bilbao was like Spain's Youngstown, if you mm -hmm. know what I mean. It's, it's a Rustville town. Yeah. And all of a sudden, one building made them worldwide famous wow. and really changed the culture of that city. Mm -hmm. So architecture can have tremendous influence. That's crazy. It can just, just turn something, just boom it, right? Mm -hmm. Wow, that's crazy. Has, uh, you feel like, that has happened here in Cincinnati. What? The like just the uh, a certain piece of architecture has like changed a certain area of Cincinnati and. Oh like, yeah, okay. uh, I mean that an impact on the university. Mm -hmm. Certainly, during my time, architecture became at one point number one program over Harvard. Wow. Um, it has slipped since then, mm -hmm. but at that time, it was consistently on top 10 and certainly one or two years they became number one and so the demand of students went up the more creative students were trying to come here uh, just see it's like an architectural museum here mm -hmm. a live architecture museum so so much to learn right here so it attracts a lot of very good students all over the world that was crazy. I didn't know it was like above Harvard at one point. Yeah. Wow, that's impressive. Mm -hmm. That was when you were like uh, dean. I dean. Mean, dean. Okay. At that time. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. So, I guess next, um, where do you see UC going in like the future? Very good. The new president uh, is giving a lot of emphasis on innovation. Mm -hmm. They're developing innovation corridor up there and um, where it will go is difficult to say at the moment but they just got started. Mm -hmm. uh, certainly it has a lot of possibilities. 
and uh, we just have to see. Nice. So, um, trying to think. Um, do you, uh, there's a lot of, or there's a couple of buildings that have been built since I've been here as a student. Um, were you like involved in those buildings in the, I think it's the Marion Spencer Hall and the new Lindner? Uh, Lindner, I was very definitely involved. Right? Sure. Right. Yeah. Bernard Chumi, a French architect whom I brought in. Which is the Marion Spencer Hall? I don't know. That. It's the, I think it's the new one by Morgan and uh, Sayodo or Sayoda uh, dorms. It's the mm -hmm. glass one over there. That's by, uh, I think it's Turner Circle. Mm -hmm. I think it's called Marion Spencer. That was just built recently, I think. Um, um, built recently? Yeah, like uh, between the time I've been here. Mm. Over on that side, Jefferson side. Yeah, it's by it's by Jefferson, by um, Turner, and uh, the two uh, twin dorms of Morgan and Sayada. The Morgan and Sayada is on the... William Howard Taft side, isn't it? The it's it's uh it's the one that's by M O K and Jefferson oh, Ray. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. The new dorm you're talking. Yeah, the new dorm. That's called Spencer, is it? Spen yeah, 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 I think. Uh, there used to be three of those dorms. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, we took one down. Uh huh. And now that one has been replaced. Oh, okay. So was it like there? In the same spot, or is it in a different same spot? Place? Same spot. Okay. Yeah. Two that look alike, right? Uh huh. Uh, but they were terrible, so really? <laughs> we had repaired. But it was very costly repair. Uh -huh. And at one time they were so bad, the one was taken down, uh -huh. and that has been rebuilt differently. Mm -hmm. It's more brownish building. Yeah. Uh, I didn't realize it was named uh, that's. We're staying because Marion Spencer was a good friend of mine. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Very good. So, yeah, that was... So you were really involved in the new Lindner building? Oh, Lindner building, mm -hmm. definitely. Yeah. Was, yeah. Okay. And then... Um, I'm trying to think. I know there's some... Uh, I'm blanking. <laughs> it's like a... Uh, You said that um, the buildings, they're like before with the with the new I think Marion Spencer Hall, the one mm -hmm. I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. There, uh, it was just you guys just tore them down. Was it because it was just too hard to like keep up? It was or yeah, it really was terrible down? shape. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, I had an office at one time on a research project in one of them, Sayato, I think, in the middle one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, it was terrible. I mean, you could. The family living next door on the other side, you could hear all the conversation and everything <laughs> when we were walking. And uh, it, it's terrible. Uh, and it deteriorated very fast. It's almost slum like, really. It didn't work. So, first plan was all three to be taken out. Mm -hmm. We had taken one out, then we found a way to renovate one. Mm -hmm. We liked it so much, we renovated too. Mm -hmm. But we did not want to repeat the same one because it was taken down. Yeah, We wanted it to be a different one. Mm -hmm. So a different architect was selected to do that. Spencer. Spencer, okay. okay. That's cool. Um, but they used to be called Three Sisters. They were just alike. Oh, so they were like really exactly alike? The exact design, yeah. Oh, okay. That's cool. I had no idea. That's I like I like learning about like how there were like different buildings throughout the time. Yeah. I know there was uh, one big one that I just know recently that I had no idea. I think it was called Sander Hall. Mm -hmm. That was uh I'm uh that was taken I think that was no. taken down. Okay, yeah. It was a terrible building. It was, was twenty two story high. Really? And um uh we couldn't reuse it for anything. It was dormant, but it was uh, half of it was men's and half of it was women's, and really? there were a lot of complaints about that. 
it, it, it really was quite a problematic situation. Uh, it was in code violation and all kinds of things. It, we did all kinds of studies to see whether it could be reused somehow. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it just was not possible. So it was taken down. The whole thing was, it was amazing. They, they have this group who do that. And mm -hmm. actually I photographed it. Oh, gradually it came back. Brings it down. Yeah. Wow. So you so you were like actually out there when it like came back. Yeah, they allowed me to get, go pretty close with my camera so that I can photograph it. Wow, that's cool. Is that like one of the the biggest buildings that you guys tore down at the campus? Yeah, that was the tallest one. Now we're talking about getting this one down. Oh, the Crosley. Crosley? Yeah. yeah, that's crazy. Um. So where where was Sander located on the campus? Um, after Marion Spencer's building that you're talking uh -huh. about, yeah. the University Avenue. Yeah. Then there's another new dormitory, angular kind of dormitory. Uh -huh. And after that, there's a flat building or eating hall or something like that there. Or maybe it's African American Studies Center. Oh, right there? Yeah. Okay. It, it was the same building, mm -hmm. that's the lower part of the building and there was a tall structure right there, 22 stories high. Oh, so the African American... Uh, At least it was there for a while, I don't know whether they're still, that's what it's called. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think that is what it's called. Okay. But that's where that's where the building was. Yes. Okay, so like the building. And even that building is part was part of the same building. Oh, it was. It, it was the lower part of the building, and the other was a slab that went up straight. Oh, okay. So I thought it was just when it came down, it just like obliterated everything. But no. they managed to preserve so like they that do part. The, um, an amazing scientific way they approach it. They are just very just surgical. That's really interesting. Well, um, we've uh, talked over we've talked over a lot of the questions here. Mm -hmm. um, maybe maybe like last two questions. Were there like any incidents or events that happened that kind of disappointed you at UC?